Well, here's the amp in situ. As you can see, it's a bit of a big mother. That's a 1960 B cab on the bottom there. And the amp basically loves to fit nearly all the way across. It's a bigger, fatter, wider, stronger, a bit like Ingvay himself, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but you can see, uh, if you want something nice and light to tour around with, this is not the amp. That's the first thing. Let's take a look inside. Right from the outset you can see it's a massive amp and uh, we're going to whip the chassis out, take a quick look inside, see what's going on, see what you get for your £1,515, that's a lot of dollars too, hey, let's whip the back off, yep, that screw there, believe it or not, screwed all the way out, they, uh, they use machine screws like they did on the AFD, but I think the AFD was bigger and longer than this. Not very good. Still, it holds it high, I guess. There's just really not much left to hold it in place. Just that little few threads. Well, these are the first views inside the chassis. You can see you've got the standard uh, Marshall EL34s that they always put in there. Whether they're good, bad or indifferent, who knows. I can't figure that one out. You've got these great big fat transformers, uh, which uh, Santiago Alvarez said were the same uh, as in the AFD. Uh, interesting. You've also got uh, three tubes, three preamps, and a fourth preamp, which they claim does something or other. I'll check the notes. Let you know on that. Underneath, unlike the 1970s thing that this is supposed to be based on, uh, what all you get is these uh, cheap and nasty uh, mounts. I guess they won't take long to come off, really. And uh, basically, one, two, three, four screws, should I say, to hold it in place. Look at that. You see that? That's all very interesting. That's how it came from the factory for 1550 quid. Awesome. Yeah, what do you think of that? That's not too cool. Not where I come from. It hasn't been scratched by me. It came straight out of the box like that, and the box hadn't been out. Hmm, QC. Oh hey, fancy that, here we are inside. Output transformer. Oh, 29, I think that's the same as the AFD, probably is. Santiago Alvarez said it was, so I guess it probably is. What else we got? A nice big fat motherboard. Uh, all the usual things and... Uh, the rest of it on there. There's a few new additions, <laughs> in fact, but you've still got all those nice fuses down this end that if they do go uh, and fail while you're out, you'll be screwing the lid off. Don't worry. It's no problem, they say. I also had uh, problems on this one. Uh, I've got some photographs of it. Of things like this and this, these two here. They were actually touching. Actually, one of them two was these two here. See these down here? Well, they're not far away now, but they were actually touching. Uh, so, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Well, we shall see. Uh, what else we got? Well, it's a regular run-of-the-mill PCB. It's what you'd expect to see. It has uh, this on it. I suppose it makes it different. I don't know. <laughs> You've got the input down the front. One of the things I really don't like about this uh, amp, uh, no matter what anybody says, is nice special custom pots across the front. When did you last see some of them? Well, I didn't. You might have. But I didn't. But I tell you this, you ain't going to be seeing them out stuck on the road. Uh, that's for sure. Moving across, it's the usual things you've got the power supply area down here, the smoothing and the rest of it and of course you've got the transformer there that's the uh, the input transformer to change the volts around a bit this is the output side because it would be, there's the output transformer this looks almost identical to the same as the AFD moving across, we can move across to this section here yeah, sure is. It's the loop and the foot controller. And that one zooms off and connects to this board. 
where all the gubbins is. These are the controls on the back down here for the uh, preamp and all that stuff. Noise gates and God knows what. And you can see that uh, it's got all the usual niceties in there. Take a nice look at that. That's about as near as I'm going to be able to get with that. But I'm sure you can read the chips. Some control chips. Who knows what else? I'm sure somebody does. No, I don't. Don't matter. You boys on the internet will know. Hopefully not the ones in the forums, but that's another story. And that's what you get for £1,515. Oh, and that's one more thing. You know how I harp on about things. What have we got here? Well, fancy that. It's another one of them chokes. <laughs> you know, and things nobody wants or doesn't need or why not put a resistor in. Who knows? I don't know. The answer, well, maybe that's why it costs 1500 quid. I don't know. <laughs> what am I to say? I know other people will talk about it. But, you know, the only thing that concerns me, or did concern me about this amp, is the quality. You can see on the back of the case, you see that scratch there? That was there from the factory. Believe it or not, straight from the factory. I took this out of the box from the uh, supplier, which will remain nameless for now, and it was sealed. Thanks very much. There it is. Scratch down the back. The other thing was, like I said earlier, these things down here, were touching and then you had some of these others here all bent over or, and thrown around and I'm sure that electrically uh, for the most part it was okay but surely you know if you mark on the PCB where the uh, resistor should be having it bent off an inch out of the way d doesn't help and absolutely down there <laughs> where the two were touching and uh, that definitely doesn't help where's the QC in that but then again maybe this was just one of the Rush jobs. No, I can't be a rush job. I've been waiting for months. Nice, nice look over it. I suspect the real gubbins are all up there at the top. Which is where you'd expect them. On that subboard, for the most part, I suspect. And uh, where you go. That's what you get for your money. Nice look inside. Hope yours is better than mine was. Okay, here's one last look at the uh, chassis uh, when I had it the way I wanted it to look. Uh, just before I fit it. It's all nice, neat, ship shape. Basically the way it should be. That's what I really expected. Some of those things, I don't know. Where's the quality gone? And these are basically the tubes that were fitted that came from the factory. One last go with the tube out of the marshal. As you can see, there it is. And on the other side I have another tube that's... Uh, well, I wouldn't say it's similar. I would say it's exactly the same. In fact, it is the same. And if we twizzle this one around a little bit in the marshal where it should be you might just be able to make out that's a, a winged C EL34 made in Russia this one I don't know what date that is but this is week 18 of 2011 so it's not that old that's a little bit older but they're both brand new that one's out the amp that one isn't I wasn't going to fit these now there's no point fancy that Last but not least is the uh, preamp tubes. This is the red one. This is the one that's probably the best quality. And the other three, if you can get to see them there, are the regular run of the mill Marshall ones. Probably Chinese. I don't know. This one's probably a bit higher quality. But who knows? They don't tell you. In any case, that red one is pretty well shielded. And the others aren't. Because they never are, are they? Unless you uh, look in certain amps, but the marshals always seem to be pretty much like that. Week 2509 for the other three. Like the same batch. I didn't check the other one, but you should review it on the tape. And there it is, back in its nice uh, wooden box. All nice and neat and finished and ready to rock and roll, as they say in the trade. 
there's the amp with a quick shot of the cover back on and ready to put back onto the uh, 9060B. And there she is back as she's meant to be sitting on top of a 1960B from Marshall. A few things you get with this amp, uh, this is one of them, uh, you can see it. Nice little red joining cable, normally uh, what I normally do is uh, wind it in there, like that. Hook the guitar in this one, and away you go. Very plexi-like. In fact, if you didn't see the uh, YJM on the front, in fact, you wouldn't know it was a YJM from the front. Many people have said that. All the stuff you get, a nice fat manual. We'll come to that in a minute. Turn it up. There he is on the front. There's Jim. Getting on a bit now, Jim. Hope you're still okay. A bit more about Ingbe. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? You can't really see that those are Ingbe amps at the back. <laughs> well, they are, but not as we know them. Then you get to. Uh, a bit more about Ingve, he's uh, mellow that way. Then you get a bit about, uh, oh look, the show you how to connect it like I did 30 years ago. Fancy that. <laughs> you probably didn't. You probably well, you weren't around. You probably you weren't around 20 years ago, who knows. Uh, oh, you can connect it this other way. This is what the knobs do. Let's see that. A bit about the back panel. Nice. Yeah, boring. And then we move on to other languages, and Ingve again, after a while he looks bad, doesn't he? And it goes on and on through the manual in other languages, so what you actually get in the manual is the first page from Jim. Nice Jim. Less well, nice Ingve, but I like Ingve. He's a brilliant musician, actually. I always remember uh, the first album that he, that he really uh, did anything with. Uh, awesome. Is the word. Then we've got uh, page two, page three, page four, page five, and that's it. That's all you get with the manual. So let's throw that away. I don't know for that. One thing about it, it's better than some of the other stuff. You get one of these two. This uh, tells you who did production line assembly. Tony, Betty Wilson, Martin Pat Patton is that? probably and Mark Reeve final test and inspection hey Mark you didn't pick this you didn't pick the scratch up on the bottom and as for the rest who knows I don't know nice marketing extended warranty which no doubt will be rapidly filled in and sent back to Marshall because three years is better than one especially with some of them resistors the way I saw them you get the uh, run of the mill Euro trash, martial amplification, safety instructions, I'm sure it is. And you get this very nice, uh, what is it? This is to certify the holder certificate. So, da, 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 built to celebrate monsters. Da, 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 da. Whatever it is, anyway, it's a bit of a printout that makes the amp look a bit better. I guess for your 1515 quid, it's a contribution towards the, uh, I don't know, the aesthetics. Don't do anything else, does it? But most importantly, Never mind the rest. All the rest's crap for the most part. And this is what you want. You want the YJM100, the Ingve J Malmsteen signature 100 watt all valve amplifier cover. It's got Ferrari written on here anyway. I can't see. It. Maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. Makes a little difference. It's a great cover. It's just a pity I never use them. Uh, but I might even get this one out because uh, I like red. I like the cover. I like it. <laughs> it's great. But if the amp had been £1,300 without this, that would have been nice. Actually, if the amp had been eleven ninety five, just the same as the AFD, uh, that would have been even nicer. I'm not sure the difference in the money. See, you can take one of these, and you can use one of these. You can buy, buy one of these for an awful lot cheaper than you can buy one of them things that's inside it. And if you use the Ingve Malmsteen one, that they claim is inside the amp or it's an equivalent well I bought mine for 39 quid so it makes the uh, you know the plexi 
that hasn't got any plexi. <laughs> it makes the plexi rather expensive if you disregard that. And if you still had a, a noise gate for 50 quid, I mean, that's 80 pound. Yeah, I keep coming back to this. That must have been hundreds. I don't know. You make up your own mind. One more thing you get is this uh, nice foot pedal. Metal. Nice and strong. Probably take it to stuff on the road. And you can probably throw it around. And it comes with the now standard Marshall cable. Nice cables actually for a foot pedal. However, I think the, uh, the cable that you get for the speaker uh, isn't really so great. It's probably okay for a foot pedal cable. Well, that's the one they that's the one they provide uh, right there for the speaker. Uh, so out of the amp into the speaker. I have one of those monster cable things because that's the way I am. The big fat one. No, not me, you fool. The cable. Okay, okay. You're gonna tell me I'm not one of them tone hounds. I mean, you only got to take a look at these settings to see that. Well, Tony's at it again. I just feel like this on the AFD too. But I did do this with it, and I did crank them both, and uh, I suppose it gives an equal sound with a bit more gain. Who knows? Treble's cranked. Middle's mid. Bassy's pretty cranked. Presence is pretty high. I think the things round the back are about uh, halfway on everything. And uh, with one of these, it gives you an absolutely awesome sound sound that is reminiscent of people like oh, I don't know there's thousands of them I've been playing tonight uh, like Robin Trower people like uh, who else can I think of who else did I go through uh, oh yeah Black Sabbath when they were doing uh, Die Young uh, and that other track you know that sort of bluesy track that oh, man the, the tones in here are well they're awesome there's no doubt about it but it's for a particular style you're never going to get today's detuned rock particularly out of this amp. That isn't what this amp's about. What it's about is really some of the coolest tones that you're ever going to get from rock music. And you know what tracks they are and you know what music that is from what era. Uh, they're awesome tones and uh, that's as good an amp for that as you'll ever get. Awesome. Actually you could tell I was just, uh, I'd just finished playing this and uh, Man, it makes you makes you shake, and I don't mean through volume. I mean it might look cracked, but it's only on about uh, I don't know. It's on about four out of ten on the uh, on the power uh, ridges, I think. Thingy, what's it? <laughs> uh, but you get that feel. Uh, I use this guitar, just the regular run of the mill thing, uh, and I can switch that into strat mode as well as uh, you know humbucker. Sounded awesome. Maybe that speaker contributes, I don't know, that's what the one they say to use, so there you go. Well, here we are, at the end of the uh, inside and outside uh, review. As you saw, there was uh, quite a lot of things uh, that were good about the amp, and there were quite a lot of things that weren't so good about this one. For example, uh, when you looked at the resistors, and the resistors were doing that, touching each other. Uh, that wasn't so cool. And uh, I wasn't so happy about the scratch underneath the amp either. Actually there's two of them if you look close enough. It's not a problem. But, uh, it shouldn't be that way. I also didn't like the you know the thing on the front parts uh, where those front parts were like a surface mounted part and uh, as far as anything goes they're, they're really not quite standard. In fact they're not standard at all. If you open something like a Mesa Boogie, uh, you'll find in there that they're all just three wire parts and you can change them in five minutes. In fact, exactly as Mesa Boogie says so. Well, this isn't a Mesa Boogie, it's a Marshall. And you can see where uh, you know, some of the costs have been uh, effectively reduced by using that type of product. That's great, and uh, they work just as good uh, 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 as all the other ones, as Santiago Alvarez said. The only problem is that uh, that's good until you get one fail on the road. And he said, oh yeah, but they never fail. Well, maybe they don't. And maybe yours will. <laughs> that's the only thing, isn't it? Yours might. The rest won't. So you'll be off the road unless you've got a spare one of these. And trust me, you're never going to carry two of these under your arms. They just weigh a ton. In fact, they think they're 24 kilos. That's 48 pounds for an hour. Now don't forget to check out the uh, reviews I'm doing, uh, 
the written reviews on my website, TonyMcKenzie.com, uh, because uh, you always find things in the review that are never in the videos that I do. And uh, sometimes uh, the review will mark the amp up as being a little bit better because I've had longer with it. And sometimes it won't, it'll mark the amp down uh, or the product down uh, because I've spent longer with it <laughs> and you'll learn more as you go. Uh, but in, e in any case, uh, uh, you should really be checking that out on the website. Uh, uh, you'll get a bit of better insight. And one last thing. I don't play like uh, Ingve Malmsteen. Uh, never will. Can't do it. Probably you can't either. And that's part of the reason of these reviews. Because most of the people that buy these amps uh, are not Ingve Malmsteens. Well, what are you going to get out of the amp? If you're not an Ingve Malmsteen, well, you're going to get a lot out of it. It's a great amp. It's a great sounding amp, at least. This one, well, on the QA wasn't quite there, but that's just life, you know. Someone might going to be right, are they? They're not 100% on anything. Nobody is. But the fact is uh, that when you buy this amp, uh, you know, you want to know that it's going to be right for you. And unless you go and uh, crank one up and uh, borrow it for a week, which they aren't going to let you do, uh, you'll not know. Uh, but listening to uh, and reading my reviews, hopefully it contributes in some way so that you don't go and buy something that's not for you. Often that is the case. People do that, then you see them on eBay next week. Don't forget to watch out for those other reviews. Uh, I'm doing the video reviews uh, of the sound itself. Uh, you know, uh, on YouTube, uh, on my channel, Tony McKenzie Com, and uh, that'll have playing in there. As I said, it's not a Malmsteen playing, but it, nevertheless, it, you'll get the, the the tones out of the thing, and you'll hear it. And uh, I think it, it sounds great. Uh, but we'll see when we get down to actually recording. And uh, look on the website for other stuff. There's loads and loads of reviews. And if you come from a forum, by the way, stay there. Hide behind your little stupid name. Bye. Rock and roll.